Yo guys, welcome back to the Friday podcast. I'm your host, Big J. I'm RJ. And today, we're with one of our sponsors, Man Made Barbers. Thanks for having us. We've got Search and we've got Cam. They're father and son, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> See the resemblance, part from the hair. <laughs> so, um, yeah, every Wednesday or every Friday, That's you see it. RJ's hair always. and it's always fresh. That's thanks to these guys. 100%. Big so, shout out to that. Yeah, man. First of all, thanks for having us. No problem at all, man. Like, um, glad to have you guys. Straight into it then. Barbershop, man. How did you get into it? Where did you start? Ooh, barbershops. I've, I've grown up in barbershops. So yeah, yeah. My cast. Wait, wait, you know what? Yeah. I was just about to get into this. So okay. do you want to explain? You know, some people, they don't know how this casting works. Okay. And I already asked RJ, RJ yeah, like, yeah. Varans. Yeah. So do you want to quickly explain how that works for people who don't know? So basically, in our community, like, like in, in our, our culture. In India? We, yeah, yeah, we've got different, different castes. So some are farmers, some are goldsmiths, some are shoemakers, some are tailors. Um, and our caste, we're barbers. Yep, yep. So, so it's in your blood, basically. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Cap, like, for example, him, he's the sixth generation barber in my family. My granddad, great granddad, both sides of my family, we've had barbers. So yep. barbering, I've known it since a little kid. Like, yep. My granddad had a barber shop in Highfields. Yep. Um, and... As a kid, we were just at my, at the, my granddad's barbershop. You know when you were a kid, yeah? Did you know this is what you're going to eventually get into? Or did you have aspirations of doing anything else? No, not really. It just, it just fell into place. Like, yeah. you know, um, I, I worked doing loads of different things. I worked in London at the airport. And I came back to Leicester. I worked for British Gas for a while. But barbering was always there. I started from a very young age helping my granddad at his shop, yeah. sweeping or things like that. So it just naturally progress into what it progressed into but like obviously with the competition that's around now in yeah, barbers yeah. in barbering especially like you literally not yeah. just in barbering i think especially it's barbers in leicester yeah when you it, go out of town you don't because you know when we were younger you see 350 everywhere in it yeah yeah and you it was hard across it? the wall like yeah, 350 yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean yeah, that's that's then, the main thing <laughs> then it became three five pound for a skin fade <laughs> <laughs> then it then it was three pound fifty or you, you can get a one or 0 0.5 for a three pound fifty how do you stay current with like all these all this competition Right now, with myself, I don't. I'm not. Uh, our barber shop's not. In terms of pricing, we're not up there. Yep, yep. We're not down there. We keep it like in the middle. In, yep. in, in the middle. So, what we find is that the service that we offer, like with our haircuts, or whatever, we'll go that extra mile. Yeah. You yeah. know, I've worked in certain places, mm. and it, they're different styles of haircuts. You can be in and out of the chair in five minutes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. With us, you come to the shop, you book in for a haircut, you're there half an hour. It's an experience, not exactly. just a haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just a haircut, we're making an experience. And that's what haircut barbering is. It's an experience, you know. You get clients, you get, we get all sorts of clients come in. Yeah. We get clients come in, like, you know, that, uh, doctors, lawyers, down to young little kids. And, 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 I, and I, I'm able to kind of relate to all these people. I can talk to a three year old kid. I can talk to a 93 year old man. Do you know sometimes I feel like your job entails also being like um, someone to talk to. You're like a therapist. Yeah, people come massively. You, yeah. you know, Barbers is one of them people yeah, you can yeah. go to and you can talk about whatever you want yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're just going to give you an unbiased opinion. And it's like a podcast yeah, yeah, episode yeah, yeah. every time you go without the cameras. You know what I mean? They're exactly yeah, yeah. like that. The, the conversations I've had with you. The Mike. person who you've got in your chair. You don't know what their backstory is. They could have, I've had some happy stories. I've yeah. had some sad stories. I've had people get out of the chair and give me a hug and say, you know what? Thank you, I needed that. Yeah, 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 100%. Just ch ch chatting to customers. So it's, it's not just about the haircut. I feel that we are. And how, how do you, okay, so obviously this is your son. How do you teach him that? Or is it something you just pick up? Or is there like? With Cameron, again, he's been around barbershops all his life as well. Yep. So he's just watched. He's just been there, like from. Like, I remember he used to hold on to the chair, like he'd be holding on to the chair. I'm cutting hair, and he's just started walking. <laughs> and he's just holding on to the chair, like you know. I'm cutting hair, looking down at him. So he's, it's in his blood. He's grown up he's, around He's grown up around barbershops, and I think doing that, you naturally absorb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, You're the, product the, of your environment, yeah, isn't it? Exactly that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, another question I had as well. So, barbering's a skill. Yeah. And having a business, opening a business, running a business, yeah. that's a totally different skill to being yeah. a barber. How do you bring them both together and how did you learn your skill? Obviously, being around 
you're saying your granddad and that, yeah. but I'm sure your granddad's shop, I imagine it in Highfield, just being like an old school shop, people just walking yeah, yeah, in, to, word of mouth. Just, like, you see, he used to have a like, cigarette in his hand, he's cutting hair, he used to have ashtrays. Ashtrays, yeah, yeah. yeah. I ashtrays remember that in, in Africa, barbers, man, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, sick. Yeah, ashtrays in the barber chairs. Um, the, the business side of it is, it's a lot of it, it's come from my dad. Okay. So my dad's run businesses, so I, I've picked up a lot of that side. Was he a barber as well? No, my dad, didn't, my, my dad didn't do barber. Okay. I think he done it back in the day when he was a bit yeah, younger, yeah. but then he, he had like a factory and he... he okay, yeah, that yeah. As well. mm, but that side of it, I've learned more from my dad. But then growing up, you start picking up different, different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Next question to Cam. Would you have got into barbering if your dad wasn't into barbering? Do and you also, think... On the back of that, did you have any other aspirations that when you were younger, when you was at school, did you think, oh, I want to be a footballer, I want to be this, that, maybe a gamer, or did you always yeah. know you were yeah, a Yeah, good question. Of course, yes, answering Rahul's first. I don't know, because if he wasn't a barber, I don't know what my future would have been. Okay, fair. But also, probably not. You know, if he wasn't a barber, I definitely probably wouldn't have been a barber. And then to answer your question, sorry, what was it? What was, if you weren't a barber, basically, what, what was your aspirations as a kid? What else oh, would yeah. you so, be? As a kid, I love cars. Yeah. Like, cars are my everything. I think before even speaking, I could actually name cars on the road. <laughs> like, I just name them out, just like Audi, <laughs> Toyota. Like, I, I don't know. Was, my uncle was like, bro, he's got a superpower. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bef like when I was growing up, I wanted to be like a technician. I mean, at the time, my favorite brand was Audi. So being like an Audi technician working for Audi, that was sort of like, a goal then but then obviously growing up things change and stuff like that so it kind of goes off course a bit um do you remember your first haircut giving like the first uh, haircut no nah, it would have been when would it have been my babby your first haircut yeah his first haircut yeah yeah his first haircut was a uh, bun one oh yeah, yeah. no the first haircut no, no, you gave us. oh my first that haircut you gave. yeah oh no yeah that was my little cousin my little cousin, he's my dummy, man. Anything that I want to do, I just do to him. I don't care. I say, what do you want to do? He's just, oh, do whatever you want, man. He you knows like, it's going to look good anyway, so just do what you oh, want. Fair. But yeah, my little cousin. Um, like you said you, you had maybe other aspirations as a kid. You wanted to be an Audi mechanic. Um, did your dad inspire you? Yeah, of course. Up? He... He used to buy and sell cars so every different week we'd have like a, a different oh, car. Yeah, yeah. It, or yeah it, it, it was just like, I was always around cars. Yeah, I yeah. was never not around cars. Car shows, him buying and selling cars. Like it, I've just always been around it. So I guess it kind of just ties all together in my relationship with cars and stuff like that and the love that I have for them. And um, working with your dad again, I work with my dad. Yeah. How do you think that's helped with your lot's relationship and bond? Oh, very. Like, when I'm growing up, I don't see him much because he's at the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I spent a lot of time growing up with my mum, not yeah. really much with my dad, but now it's that transition period from a kid to, to like a man, adult, yeah. yeah. I'm spending it with my dad now, working in the shops every day, helping, helping out. It's stuff, quite so. interesting because I got a haircut of both, of both of these two, yeah? Yeah. Like, obviously, there's you, two You told me the story, but yeah, tell him. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's two differences. There's two differences. Like, Satch is quite your old school barber, get you in and out like do your laser up fade everything nice this like now they start using the enhance enhancements like literally just now we're obviously doing my lineup and everything yeah they put some white pencil in yeah. you can tell the difference like enhancements and things like you can tell that like obviously when i, I had a chop in vegas it was probably one of the worst experiences ever but still they use enhancements that made me look like dj khaled <laughs> but like this is the first barbershop in the uk and leicester that i've know of that are using enhancements so that's big like that's yeah, that's yeah. sick like not not many barbershops are currently doing that right now and you know like you said you're probably stuck in here all day or stuck not stuck but you're in your shops all day so how do you see the new trends and, and like the new equipment that's happening do you have like so trade shows social media. a lot a lot of it is social media the thing is like rahul said with myself yeah I'm an old school barber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's a totally, di totally different game now. The way that I do things and the way that Cam does things 
it's, it's, it's completely it's, different. different. Yeah, you know what? That yeah, I don't think it's just barbering. I think the whole world's changed. You get me? Yeah, Since yeah, we yeah, were yeah. young, and until well, when, when we were young, how our parents used to run businesses and how we run it, it's totally it's different, totally isn't it? Like, I remember us telling you to use his equipment. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what he used to do. Oh, yeah, to he me. goes, "Oh, use cameras." That yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so one better. time he couldn't do my hair, so he he so um, Cam did my hair, and the fade lasted longer. No lie, <laughs> the fade lasted longer, a day or two longer. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, he's." You got new equipment, that's why I'm like, use his equipment then. Do you know what I mean? The thing is, the equipment I've got old school wall, yeah, yeah, wall yeah. clippers, and I've, I've that was top of the range. Yeah. <laughs> now you've got all these different, different um, style crafts, and you've got calibers, and you've got pissed off barber, and you've got all these different, yeah, different brands. Made. With me, I still stick to my old school wall clippers. Yeah, yeah. Like, Cameron, he's got like, he's got all these, all these new things, but then again, that works for him. It's a totally different style of barbering. With me, it's more of a Old school style of barbering. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the game, the, the last 20 years, how much the game's changed, and a lot of that social media. Yeah, 100%, you know, man. To what it is today. What's the next 20 years going to bring? Exactly. You know? And speaking about social media, you lot are very active on social media. You've got yeah, um, a good following on Instagram. How impactful and how important do you think social media is just to run your business See, and a brand? Th there's. there's with social media, there's positives and there's negatives. Yeah. Positives, you can, you've got a reach of people out there. Yeah, you unlimited. Reach of people. Yeah, of course, you know, you put a sponsor, the amount you put in, you can hit thousands and thousands of people. Yeah. But then there's the negatives of it is, and this has happened to me, for example, I've had staff working for me, yeah? And I've had other, and I won't do this to nobody else. I won't tread over somebody to toes. get to where I want to yeah, get yeah. to. I've had certain barbers message my staff, say, oh, why don't you come work for me? Mm. You know, and mm. that, that back in the day we never had that. You got your staff, you got your team. Yeah, you had the gentleman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Head hunting going on in barbering. Yeah, 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 you yeah, can, yeah. I can imagine, and, you know, man. It, it, people will use that to to stamp over you. Yeah. To get where they want. Um, whereas with me, I'm not like that. I, you know, I wouldn't. I, I've messaged barbers previously on on Instagram when I've been looking for staff, and I've had barbers come back to me and say, "Oh, oh by the way, Satch, look, thank you for the offer." But I work here. And yep, I'll be like, yep. look, that's cool. I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't. I know that person, and I'm. I don't want to take this any further. Good luck with your career, and hope it, hope, hope it's well. You, you know when a role does come available, when you've got a chair empty, yeah. what's the process? How do you like? You said you approach well, but how do you know how good they are? Is it just through? Is it like a self-employed sort of thing, like contract? So or it thing, works or differently. So certain barbers will be employed. Okay. So certain barbers you'll employ, pay them an hourly wage. Certain barbers, you can rent a chair. So you say, right, for example, I want 80, 90 pounds, 100 pounds for this chair per day. Yeah. Then whatever you do. And is that up to yeah. you or up to them? You sit down and, and you kind of have that chat. Yeah. And then the, the other is a, um, a commission base. Yeah. 50 so 50, for example. So you can say, right, okay, for every haircut you do, you keep half of it, I'll keep half of it. So if you're charging 40 pounds for a haircut and beard, you say, right, 20 quid's yours, 20 quid's mine. Okay. So there's, there's different ways in, in how but, you can do it. But how do you assess how good a barber is? Is it just through the social media or by the mouth or just a bit of both? Or technique? I, my belief is that how good a barber is, is not up to me. It's up to our client. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I get no. customers come through the door and they'll say to me, all right, who's the best barber in here? And I say, I can't answer that because to you, you might be the barber. best barber, yeah. To this guy, he might be a better barber. To that guy, the other. So it's up to you. I can tell you who's been doing it longest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But who's the most experienced? Yeah, but that doesn't, you know, that that doesn't. You can get barbers that have been cutting for for years, yeah, and very slack. You can get barbers that have just come into the game and they're smashing it. For example, Cameron. Yeah, it's killing it, killing it. I don't let no one touch my hair. <laughs> yeah, I just see your resume and everything. But no, as well, man, how, talk us through COVID, man. How was that for you guys? You man? know what, yeah, on the way here, actually, I had this question and I didn't know the answer, yeah? So during COVID, obviously, you guys weren't allowed to be open, right? Yeah. yeah 18 months, this shop was closed 18 months. That's mad. But as a, like, as a, not a customer, as a human being, yeah. I didn't even know the answer until he told me, how was the general human being supposed to even get a haircut or were you just supposed to your hair or do it yourself? With me, I was all right. I had Cameron Regis's to come. I used to walk to the test room with like a fresh trim. He was just looking at me like, how have these guys got fresh trims? Um, 
But I think that was the thing. They wanted you either do it yourself or not get ahead. Yeah, that's it. That's it, it. That's it yeah. Get your missus to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. some Turkish guys got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those people out there doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, 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 you know, like, you see footballers and they've they got these freshest trims and they're in the newspaper, they're going, yeah, my missus cut it. <laughs> yeah. well, that's, that's the missus in hair, bro. Missus been cutting hair for 10 years, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, how did that impact your business? Obviously, yeah, you said you closed 18 months. That must have been a hard time, man. When COVID hit, the thing with COVID... Personally, with myself, when we went, in, I did not come out the other end of COVID any worse yeah, yeah. or any better. The only time that, you know, that the only thing that I invested during COVID was time. Yeah, yeah. That's it. But that was time that I spent with my wife, my daughter, him. So for me, it was family time. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, we really enjoyed it. Like, so like I said, we didn't. Co- I didn't come out and think, oh, you know what, COVID's coming. I'm struggling or nothing like that. Like I say. I, I didn't go in, I didn't come out any better. Yeah, we were getting grants and, you know, all of that, your loans and this and that. But it weren't like, like I say, I didn't come out any better. Yeah, yeah. Or I didn't come out any worse. I just, mm. I mean, it, for me, the only thing that, like I say, invested was time. Yeah. That was time spent. My daughter, she was only three years old. So I was doing, like, nature hunts with her and I was walking around Hamilton and, like, oh, taking sick. her on bike rides. And, you, you, you know, know, in a way, yeah, if COVID didn't happen, you wouldn't have that time and you wouldn't no, be able to do that. You wouldn't have had that time, COVID, man. I did not regret it at all. Yeah, when we got back and the shops open, I was quite lucky because we've got two shops. We've got Leicester and Syston. Yeah. This shop was closed 18 months. Yeah. So we couldn't really do anything. But because Syston was outside of Leicester, yeah. what happened is we were able to open that shop for a little while. And then what, basically what was happening, all my Leicester customers, couldn't they? they were all just coming there anyway. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it was... Um, no, the car park near there is life. I know barbers like, that have only got shops within Leicester. Mm. And they couldn't open that. Yeah, yeah. But on the flip side, there was a lot of people going around doing home haircuts and. But so I guess, I guess, sorry, uh, barbering is one of them things. After COVID's finished, it's not one of them ones that's slowly going to pick up. Bang! As soon as you're open again, was it straight full again? Or? Yeah, soon, as soon as you were allowed <laughs> to open, you should have seen the piles of hair that we were sweeping. The people were coming with long hair. Yeah, I can imagine. Like, normally, we think it would take, you know, probably a, a week. You know, around four or five. Yeah, black bags. 100%. Black bags in days. Like, <laughs> I think people realise how important barbers were after COVID. Yeah. People realise it because, you know what, prices went up, yeah. Like, but you no know one moaned. No one, everyone said, yeah, fair. Like, everyone literally just dealt with it and you know what, it is what it is and that's what, that's it. Not just saying that, even like, we've been talking about men's mental health a lot recently. Oh, yeah, 100. Bro. I think a barber is like a very impactful, like, it depends who your barber is, but a lot of barbers, like we were saying before, it's part of their job, yeah? And they help a lot, you get me? That's, when you lot are probably open, there's probably people thinking, oh, thank God they've opened, like, yeah. got someone to chat to again. Oh, honestly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, before, like, when I used to go to these shops on Belgrave Road, there used to be one guy just there, just chilling. Like, he weren't getting a haircut or nothing, he was just chilling, chatting to the guy cutting there. They were just there, it's vibing, like, it was just there, just chatting, someone to talk to type thing. You know what it is, Denzel? You know, like, American culture as well, their barbershop is just a place yeah. to chill. Man, just go there just to chill. You'll I like see, you'd that. have old men just sitting there all yeah, day, just 100%. reading newspapers and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, it's a community you know thing, isn't it? It's a little community hub. Yeah. We get a lot of that here. Yeah. So people will come in, they'll just ask, oh, how's it going, whatever. You know, they'll come, they'll chill, and it's nice. Yeah, and yeah, like, 100. Like I say, with the States, what, what, one thing I would love about the way that they barber out in America, here, we face the customers against the mirror. Yeah. yeah. They, they flip the chairs around, so everybody's facing the inside of the yeah, chair. Yeah. The mirror here, the mirror's for the customer to look in. But in the States, the mirror is not for the customer. It's for the barber. barber. Yeah, it's literally. Yeah. What, what they're doing. That's exactly what they were doing to me. They were swinging yeah. me around like I was trying to see the face. Like, do you remember Desmond's? Do you ever watch Desmond's? No. Desmond's? You, could, you don't no, remember Desmond's? Young. I'm bit young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go back and watch Desmond's, man. That was a sick you show, man. Desmond's? I probably wasn't even Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Um, and that's what it was. It was just like a, it was a, a series that was based in a barbershop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's Peckham or something like that. I can't believe you've not seen and, it. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to get you on. Yeah, have to watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it. it's just jokes. That you've got the guys cutting the hair, you've got people coming in and out of the shop. I've seen barbershop. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, similar to that. that. It's similar to that. Yeah, it's just similar to that. But UK. Um, so we already spoke about COVID being... Um, the in flood, man. Yeah, the flood. What happened there? Do you want to tell us about that? What happened yeah, there? Yeah. How that came about? That. I saw his story and I'm like, what's going on outside you? You got a pool installed. Yeah, like, 
so when was it? It was me and Rick, the lad that works with <laughs> yeah. us. We was we were just sat there. It was like, it was really quiet. We didn't know why it was quiet. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, but then again, it was straight after New Year's. But it was a very quiet evening. Normally, our evenings are booked up. We didn't think to look outside. Like it was raining and all of that. But it rains. But you never think that the it whole every day, side is gonna <laughs> flood, in it. He's opened the door. He's looked down. He goes, "Yo, like, there's water everywhere." I goes, "What are you on about?" I look outside, and it's sur- it's at this point surrounding the shop. It's not actually coming in the into the shop. So it's just surrounding it. It's like ah, it, it, it's sort of like a semicircle around. You got doo doo water all around you and shit. <laughs> so this guy, he's gone. Okay, my dad's my dad's across the road. But yeah. Between the shop and the, his dad's car was all the water. So he's gone round, gone to walk to Tesco, and then go round uh, on the other side of the street because that's where the water kind yeah, of stopped. Yeah. In that ten seconds of him just walking round the shop, he got closed in by water on one side. So he's standing in the middle. I'm like knocking on the window. What are you doing? Yeah, the water's closing on the other side. So he's just standing there with water coming in. He's got no way in because no. the, the front door's on the side of yeah. the shop, isn't it? So he's had to walk through all this like that, this nasty water. Come back in the shop. We're like, right, what, what, like, what do we do now? My mom's waiting. She's ringing me, screwing like, come on, like, I'm waiting. I'm like, well, you're gonna have to go home because I can't leave the shop like this. What if it floods? So then he's wow. come down. Um, I bought the sandbags and that. I rang him. He's bought all the sandbags and we thought, yeah, look, we've smashed it on the front of, like, we're on the face of the road. We've got no water. Like, that's it. Let's go home. Turn around, all the water's coming in from all that, the, the, the crack, like, the, all, yeah, all the little gaps that'll be in the no wall and all of that. No way. Yeah. I wouldn't even know how to prepare for that, really. I wouldn't even would think about, that, oh, that, what that, if my yeah. shop gets what flooded? That's not do? even the thought that goes uh, through my head. some of the stores that were there, like, they had insurance and insurance never covered them because their neighbor broke. A pub, bro, there was a pub around yeah, the corner from us. Yeah, because their neighbor broke. The insurance what? not covered. Uh, they, uh, and the, uh, the Pampa shop, she was insured, yeah. but they goes, no, you've not, yeah. You're, you're too close to the brook, you're behind, that's your fault. So how, how did that oh. affect you? Like, did you have to close the shop for a bit and how did you come back from that? Nah, next day we were. <laughs> <laughs> this guy had his haircut. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had a haircut the next day, I was just like, yo, are you guys open? What's the soggy floor? Yeah, yeah. yeah literally just some It was just the tiles, innit? it? Luckily we had a floor underneath what we originally had, but it was long. You know, taking it out, because my yeah. uncle came down, he's like, well, water's going underneath the floorboard, so you're going to just have to mm-hmm. take it out because it's wood. It's going to soak it up. You're yeah. not going to be able to that use it. That was nice. We smashed it that night. Me and him, we stayed there till one in the morning. Got to the shop at six. Water was coming through. And then I just said to Cameron, so I, I just said to Cameron, I was like, look, Cam, let's just get this sorted. Yeah. So we when you turn business, you have to. Six o'clock, like, yeah. yeah. I yeah, said, look, most it, important man. thing, I want the shop. Re- when I first got there, there's all water in the shop. I'm thinking I'm going to have to close the shop for yeah. a week. I'm gonna have to do this. Gonna do that. But so, uh, if I seen that, and if I was a business and I seen that, I'd have an anxiety attack, bro. I want to know Imagine what to do. Imagine in your place, you be, you got car people's cars, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine. I wouldn't know where to start. He got he, yeah, obviously he not said that they went and got sandbags. Where the fuck do you get sandbags? I, I, I was working here. I went to a home base just up the road. Went and got sandbags. Went straight to Sizeton. Went home, picked my wellies up. Yeah. Went Sizeton, put the sandbags down. I, we're looking at the door and I'm thinking, yeah, come on, we've done a good job. Like, look, there's no water coming in. See, my, my head wouldn't be thinking sandbags. The, 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 I don't have no wellies, so I'll be there in my... In it, I don't know like, wellies, bro. I don't think. I wouldn't think like that. That's yeah. it. So we, we've gone there, um, put the sandbags down, and Cameron's like... So uh, we, we both stood there looking at the door thinking, yeah, we've got away with it. Water's this high. We're thinking, yeah, there's no water coming through. Yeah. He's got to be dad turned around. So the door's on that side. I've turned around under the skirting boards... From next door, yeah. the water's coming through that side. Oh, like we had about mad. three, four inches of water. And then that night I said, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to close the shop for a week. Planning everything out. Yeah. So I'm going to do this. And then um, one of my brother-in-laws came. And he's like, look, Satch, there's water under the laminates. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm there with the fucking the hairdryer trying to like, we've got everything <laughs> out. Dry and, he, and he's pulled one laminate out, cut the uh, underlay. You can see that there's water all yeah. underneath it. He goes, you're going to have to rip this out. I goes to Cam, I goes, come on, let, let's do it. So luckily one of Cam's, Cam's good friends was going past, he goes, shall I help you? He came to help, my brother in law help. We just ripped that whole floor out that night, just dashed it on the side, outside, um, and um, yeah, nine o'clock the next morning. The whole time, like, videos yeah, yeah, yeah. in on Instagram, man, you can see it, we were it's open, mad. We were open, yeah, next morning, 9.30, no, no days off. Uh, it's funny that because the floor has just got replaced yesterday. Yeah, I know, yeah, I just yeah, seen yeah. it. Fresh, yeah, 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 it looks yeah, sick. Got a nice fresh floor in there. Yeah, I'll be seeing it on Wednesday. Yeah. But again, this is this is part of businesses. You're gonna yeah, have yeah. ups, you're gonna have downs. I've had break-ins, I've had 
one guy come and smash the window here. Yeah, he I saw that yeah, recently. He, he had some random guy, he just got released out of prison. Yeah. And he wanted to go back in. He was homeless, so he just come and randomly smashed the window. The police come. The front Serious? Yeah, the police come and said to me, um, are you the business owner? I was like, yeah. They goes, look, we've caught the guy. All he's done is throw bricks at your window and waited for us. <laughs> He what? gets fed. Yeah. He gets fed in there, isn't it? Three yeah. times a day, bro. It, co- it, it cost me about a grand to replace the window. Okay. And my missus like, oh, you know, like, uh, like the money's like we've, we've had to pay. I goes, look, you just got to look at it like you've you've spent a grand, yeah, you've given somebody a room for six months. That's it. And they've got look at the positive out of the negative. negative yeah. It? So, yeah, yeah. Just look at it like that. You've donated the money to somebody that's got a roof over their head and they got fed three times a day for six six months. So you know. Um, back to the barber shops. You got two shops. You got one here and one in Sizeton, like you said. How do you manoeuvre between two shops? How do you keep in tr- like keep on top of it, or so, do you both alternate? So basically, um, at this shop, I'm here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, yep. and then Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, I do at Sizeton. So this is the Wildford Road shop. Yeah. Here Cameron, he's permanently there. Oh yeah. Yeah, and um, when I'm not here. I've got uh, Milan that works with me. He's been with me quite a while now. So Milan, he works with me. He's um, he manages this shop for me. Okay. So I've got a good team of staff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, you know. And how Milan, important do you think a good team of staff is? Very important. Without my saying is, without your staff and your customers, yeah. you don't have a business. You do nothing. Yeah. You, you don't have a business. Will you say it's harder to, like, in terms of employing barbers and things like that, do you think it's a high staff turnover with, bar- with barbering? Luckily with me, I've not. I've, I've had my time yeah. for quite a while now. You're going to get that. People are going to move on, you know. Um, I've, got, um, I've got a cousin of mine, so um, shout out Vin at Leicester Barbering Academy. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So Vin, he oh, is that your cousin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he brings his like Leicester. All Barons, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Leicester. <laughs> there, there's so many barbers that you know. Uh, we're not. A lot of us not closely related, but yeah. all in the same so much. Um, so yeah, so Finn sometimes, you know, what he'll do, he'll give me a shout. He says, "I have to come on. This person just come through the academy, really good." Yeah. You have to put, you know, you have to put a little bit into it. I can't lie. That's a good back door, you know, Vin. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, he knows who's yeah, good yeah. and he's not, and he's yeah, a good. Fair, that yeah, yeah, he's a very good uh, trainer. So we, yeah, I think yeah, we've yeah, got an episode yeah. with him coming up, man. Yeah, yeah we have actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, yeah. He's, so you know, he'll give me a call. He'll say, "Oh, such this and you know, this. I've got this person." Um, you know, they're, they're really good and, and you have to put a little bit into it yeah, yeah, so you yeah. can't just have somebody you know just fresh barber that will come in you know you, you can get that but a lot of the time the thing is the way that you work in one barber shop is different to the way that you work in yeah that, like I offer a lot of other services facials waxing threading all yeah, the nose wax. You did me twice with that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you pull that we can do it, dude. Good. Yeah, one, we can do it for you right now. What's uh, that? The wax machine. The wax oh machine. no, no. <laughs> I hate going near my nose. I, I need to do it. it as well. You know what I mean? I need to do it one time, but no, I'm not doing <laughs> this. Yeah. So, um, you know, with with staff, I like to, even if you've got a fully qualified staff member that that comes in. Yeah. I'll still kind of mold them into a man-made yeah. staff member. Because all they've got is paperwork when they come, yeah, yeah. like you said. So, but question for Kamiya, how did you learn how to fade? Was it watching, was it? Yeah, more? I think. How did you learn how to do it? Most barbers, when they start off, all they can do is watch. Watch yeah. videos, watch people, because you don't know what you're doing. So you can only kind of watch and get the, the, the gist of it. Even if you don't get it, if you copy what that person's doing, it will somewhat be okay. So I see it like an art form, right? So it's yeah. quite, you can't, like, I can watch someone draw day in, day out. I know I'm going to draw like them. Yeah, Do you oh, know what yeah, I mean? Course, so, course. so, like, it must have That's taken what a lot I mean. of time. You can watch learning. them, you can kind of copy what they're doing. It's never going to be the right thing. You just have to keep working on it. But and have then, your own techniques. Yeah, that's and stuff. it. And that's why like, a lot of social media plays into it because I watch a lot of videos. A lot mm. of these American barbers, they, they, American barbers are so respected in America. Because they do like four years of college or university, whatever. They do like four years of it. They have to go through a big process mm. to get to. It's, it's very respected down there. They're looked at like surgeons, like actual surgeons, isn't it? Because they, bro, it's, it's crazy. You so, know, you know, on, on that note, like how the, it, that job's looked at as a, as a skilled job. It, here, yeah. it, it, so here, here it's looked at as a skilled, a skilled job as well. Um, in India, People look down on barbers. <laughs> Honestly, like, yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, it's, it's like, like a, yeah, yeah. But over here and over in states, they're they're skilled. They're, 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 it's it's a skilled job. Yeah. 
One thing about America, which I think that should happen here, is licensing. Okay. Yeah. You can't just open your own thing, you have to get it. Out there, you need licenses. Where you cut in here on your wall, you have to have your license. You have to do the course, you have to go through health and safety, hygiene, this, that, whatever. And then you, you can open a shop. Right now, you can go and open a barbershop. Yeah, you can yeah. go and open a barbershop. And that's what's happening now, and that's what's changing the game that anybody can just open. open. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, let me that. give you an example here. So if I found a property yeah. and I approach Vin and say, Vin, I need three barbers, I've got three chairs, yeah. I can just go and open it. Yeah. And I don't need nothing. There's nothing stopping nothing. you. Nothing. Whereas, for example, next door, we've got the tattoo studio. These guys have to go through the council. They have to get planning, change of plan, all of that. You know, they'll come, they'll say, right, okay, you need, you need a sink, you need this, you need this waste disposal, you need all of this. With a barbershop, you can't. You can, just, you can just go see a property and stick a barbershop in there. And that, I think that's what's changed the game a lot. Yeah. And what would you, like, this is for both of you, actually. What, would, what advice would you give Satch yeah. to an to someone that's thinking of getting into barbering because now the game's completely changed right well, yeah, so you know that, yeah, I think that question is someone getting into barbering as a, like you know me for example like i just said you can give advice to someone who wants to open a shop but who's not a barber be a steeper or you can give advice to someone who wants to actually become a barber and who's just come basically actually, come out yeah, say come from bin, that way. they've done their course what advice would you give them what's the next step Go for it, hundred percent. Like if you want to be a barber, do it because it's a wicked industry to be in. You know, go for it. But the amount that this game's changed in the last twenty years, yeah. Where's the next twenty years going to take us? You know. Why do you think it has changed in the last twenty years? Because, you, and not in a disrespectful way, you've got a lot of Turkish barbers, Kurdish yeah. barbers. These guys are just coming in and they're, they're just... Yeah, bro, hot out, towel, you know? everything, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It's a different style of barbing. Yeah, it's a different it? style of barbing. And again, not in a disrespectful way, but these guys are come, coming in, they're spending dough on their shops. Yep. They're, you know, you go Narva Road now, every other shop's a barbershop. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's, it's, it, it's a thing where anyone can do it. Yeah. I had a kid, what day was it when that kid came in his, his hair got messed up? Day before uh, yesterday. I saw that post yeah, actually. Yeah. Last, look at my last post on Instagram. Yeah, it looks so bad when he came in. I had this young kid come in. He goes, "I've just gone to this barber's, and they ruined his hair." <laughs> I was closed. Yeah, I was, it was closed. so he bad. Goes, he's walked in. He's gone. Oh, bro, can I get a haircut? I was sorry, man. I'm closed. Yeah. He goes, "Look, somebody else has just Don't, messed my hair." Yeah. So I've gone to him. Turn around. So I've turned around. I've looked at his hair. Yeah, I've seen the post, and man. No word of lie. I goes to him. I'm closed, but I'm not going to let you walk. Past <laughs> I was grab a seat. Let me finish this last client and I'll do it. What it is, is with certain places, what they'll do is they'll bring their friends in. Yeah. yeah. I've seen it myself where somebody's coming to a barber shop, they've sat there for two weeks watching and they're like, oh, right. Customers walked in, kids walked in, tell him, put him on the chair. And I'm like, he's only, he's not done that. Oh, don't worry, that's how we learn. Oh. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the, anybody can do it. Like I said, this kid came in, this, whoever he went to butchered him. Yeah, I went in and said to him, look, you know, and again, another thing about barbering as well, it's, it's the service that you offer. Like, I'm not going to let this kid walk around. You know, I'm yeah, yeah, sorry yeah, for yeah. him. Like, Bro, is that what you did to my haircut like, when you saw me, when you walked, when I walked in with that hair? <laughs> the horror. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy is so like, I told him, like, you just changed up my hairstyle, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, yeah. But it looks a lot better yeah, now. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it does a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I was going to, another question I've got, but this is for both of you. What percentage of people do you, that do you have people? You know, sometimes I go to a barber. Yeah. Well, I go to my barber. Mm. I let him do what what he thinks is best. I don't have a thing that. Yeah. yeah. You get me. What percent of people do you think come in and say, "Yo, come, just do do your thing, man"? Yeah. Or do you have people oh. that specific? Oh, I want this. I want that. You get most people. <laughs> a lot of the people that kind of know who you are, they're just yeah. like, oh, just do what you want, and yeah, like, yeah. I know you're good. Just do do what you want, but then. You get like the first time comers who are like, yo, I like this bit like this. Exactly like that. That bit like that. And it's just like, sometimes it's like, bro, let me do it. It's like someone telling you yeah. how to sell. You're going to be like, bro, just let me, yeah, let me do yeah, my thing. Yeah, 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 100%. Trust me, you'll be happy with it at the end. Yeah, straight so up. It's kind of like that, but on ratios, not many people come in like picky and stuff. If they if they know they've heard good things, they're just like, bro, just do your thing, man. Have you ever had a horror story that someone turned around and said, no, nah, this is not it, man, what are you doing? I, I don't think I've ever had someone um, say that, that, that to me, but I probably like when I first started off. Yeah, probably <laughs> a couple of people that weren't happy. I think the the worst one was. And luckily, it it wasn't too bad. 
it was a, a lad who used to work with dad at British Gas, his kid. And I caught his ear with the clipper. Oh, this and guy is crying. Like, he bled like his ears being cut. It was just a little cut. It was <laughs> just like, it was, it was like this guy was shaking, <laughs> with tissues, and like. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have that. Yeah. What about yourself? Any horror stories? Oh, yeah, again, just cutting. Yeah. This was years ago. I, was, I, was, I had some client in the chair, and he had long hair, and I was just sniffing, and I snipped his ear. Yeah. Like, yeah, and like there's just like blood everywhere, and you 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 you're gonna you're gonna get. The thing is with us, with myself, I, my business is about service. Yeah. And I love giving full service. For example, that kid that came in, I didn't have to cut his hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, we try. We, I try and aim for five stars for all my reviews. Yep. Say that with me and Cameron, we're just adding up this morning. How many was it? Eleven hundred five star reviews. That's more than that's fucking mass cold. That's more than yeah, any barbers. that's sick, man. It's probably less to shit. Told you, yeah. best barbers in less. You know what it is as well, yeah. You see that kid that you're doing, yeah. He is gonna go away happy, and he's gonna tell man, look, I went here and they fucked my hair up, he came with and then I went. He goes, he goes, I'm gonna bring my friends here now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know what the thing is? Those Turkish barbers are charging the same price. Yeah. They're charging the same price, but you're paying for that lavish little setup that they've got. You're paying for the shop. Yeah, for yeah, 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 you're paying for the gold sinks and everything. <laughs> <laughs> there, 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 was so, there was something in the news um, it was, it was just about two weeks ago about like barber shops and nail places and like, money laundering. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you see all these Straight shops. Up. That's why they're so flashy. Shops. Yeah, but there's no one in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, With me, this is my bread and butter. Yeah, like, straight you know, up. What I'm doing today is putting food in my fridge tomorrow. Uh, but there, there's a lot of things uh, around that. Do you know again? Um, you said about service, yeah. For me, what's changed when since when I was a kid to now is this booking system. You know when you used to when I used yeah, to go to barber. Like for example, changed. I used to go to Vargas, innit, yeah? yeah. And Vargas guys used to know me. So and I was a kid in it, and I was, I don't, you know, now I'm a bit loud. Yeah, when I was a kid, I wasn't so loud in yeah, it. So yeah. I used to go there and sit there, <laughs> and then the guy would say, "Oh, let me just do this, Kelly." Oh, bro, I'll be there three, yeah, four, three hours. four hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 To the yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah, yeah. like it's like my uncle. He's like my dad's mate. If I say no to him, he's not switching at me. So I just sit there. But now, boom, I book and just go, and that's what I love, man. Yeah, yeah. Booking systems is good. It's yeah. got its positives and it's got its negatives in terms of. Positives is that you know you're you know where you are with your things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I block book. I block yeah. book for like three months. I don't, yeah, <laughs> this guy every <laughs> Wednesday <laughs> block <laughs> like three months. Oh, it's your last like booking that. for this Wednesday, isn't it? Do you want to block for the next <laughs> three months? I'll do it for the next three months, and it, and I'll change if I need to. But another thing with that as well is, like for example, Sisten shop that was meant to be a walking shop only. Okay. Yeah, and then what happened? Covid hit, and then oh, you had to book appointments. So all the clients started getting used to appointments. Um, so now that's the point. But and, and think about appointments as well is that once people know that you as a yeah we take walk-ins as well. But yeah. We're predominantly known as a, 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 a appointment-based yeah. barber. So you get a lot of dead time as well. Whereas when this shop used to and they never used to do appointments. I remember one Saturday morning I had 19 people waiting. <laughs> 19 people waiting. And the good thing about that is you bang in, bang one, finish it. You got your next one waiting. Bang, that one, you got your next yeah, one. Yeah. With appointments, like, these, I, I give half an hour for a skin fade. Yeah. I'm probably doing 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you got a lot of 10, 10, 10, 10 minutes gaps. You add that up over the week, that's a lot of What's that? Time. Yeah. Whereas with walking, mm. you put your next one on, put your next one on. What, what do you do in that dead time in between? Just clean, clean up. Shot, clean, yeah, clean your kit, sweep up. Look at your station, obviously sort out your yeah, station yeah, yeah. and shit, right, I guess. Um, so this is your flagship store, Welford Road. How did you, how was the progression of opening another shop? How did that come about? And did you, your client rates just grow so much? Or were you getting people from that area saying, oh, you need to open one up here? Yeah, how did Sizeton come about? That's a... Sizeton came about because, um, how did that happen? I was, I was looking for another shop. Okay. So this one is set, ready. I'm thinking, okay, now nah, it's the next step. Let's do another shop. Uh, that one came up and it was my sister that actually reminded me, she thought it's a shop in Sizeton. So I went to have a look at it. I thought, yeah, okay, nice, um, and went for it. But like I said, I've been there four years since then. I think about another four, five barber shops that have opened inside still. Um, yeah, so like competition yeah, in Nesta. But the thing is, I like competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Competition, yeah. but I, I'm not. Makes like you that. elevate, innit? Yeah, like. That's it, bro. With, with us, I'll have clients come in and I'll look at them. They'll, they'll come in and say, um, look, can you get a haircut? I'll look at my diary and I'll be, look, we're all fully booked. I'll, I'm that guy, I'll say, listen, I can't get you one. I'll go to. This person up there, take left at the roundabout. There's a shop there. But see, just tell them. Yeah, that we I'll save you. you. Yeah, you yeah. told me you couldn't get me on the first time I yeah, came. Yeah. I remember that. Um, 
I remember the first time you asked him, who's this cocky lad that you know what? Yeah, I forgot who it is, but so I was speaking to someone, they're like, oh, you know Raoul, how long you known him? I said, not too long ago, bro. Should have seen his hair before, it was a mess. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like some like, side party thing. Like, yeah, no, it was, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, bad, man. Like, it was bad. I was going through it. Old, you need to take it off, man. The, the thing with, with barbering, what I like is that I like to give my professional opinion. Yeah, that's like, awesome. I had this guy just yesterday, and he's come in and he's got really thin hair. And he's grown it long and he's got it over to the side and it just looks struggling. And I've been telling him for months, I was like, bro, come on. Like, take your <laughs> you hair down. Yeah, 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 take your hair down. I'm yeah. telling you, you look good. Um, and um, yesterday he's jumped in the chair and I was just thinking, expecting the same thing. Or maybe it was Sachin, I'm ready. He was like, ready to take He's seen your vision. Yeah, he took it off. No word of a lie, how happy he was. He goes, oh, I love it. He goes, I thought it's going to look worse than it is. It's quite patchy. So oh, yeah. So yeah. I, I worked with it, the darker bits, I lightened them out and like kind of, sometimes it's not just about running a machine over the top. You got to kind of look at the hair, work with it, see what works, see what doesn't work. And he got out of the chair and he was like, "You know what?" He goes, "I love it." He goes, "I should have done this before." Bro, if, when, if you see, if you see, if you see my pictures from before, <laughs> forget um, it. I can't see that. Do you lot give like obviously aftercare advice? What do you do? You recommend like shampoos people use? Is it different for everyone? <laughs> I I do. I know I do. Like you know when someone comes in, they've got dandruff or dry bro or hair. I'll be like, bro, try using like a shampoo without any sulfates in it or use this hair product is it's quite yeah. good or I, I try to give it because also it it's it's long you need know, to cut someone's hair with like loads of dandruff and that yeah so it's, man. It's, it's quite long it, 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 it's long to do it it's like working on a car yeah, yeah. it's just all like messed up like so you, but you know some people they probably don't know why yeah that's it. it they don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. so it's it's my job as a professional, I'm a professional yeah, yeah, yeah. i have to tell them this like look bro you've clearly got something going on you probably know it as well but try this this and this see how it goes now i had a kid that uh had like acne problems i just told him bro look it's very simple yeah eddie abu guy yeah, i was like bro yeah. clear up your diet drink a lot of water yeah, yeah, yeah. you know don't focus too much on that this this brand of skin product don't, don't focus on it. it's simple just fix up your diet a bit you know drink some water stick the odd moisturizing cream and stuff and when he came in his his face was a lot oh, less inflamed gleaming <laughs> a lot a lot less inflamed it just me diet's big man diet diet does help massive man dr cam helped him out you yeah, get that's it yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you just have to do your research it's, it's basic research at the end of the but day you know a lot of this you learn off of social media as yeah, well. you yeah. see like certain things that you know you know going off you said research yeah okay you've seen a new hairstyle how do, Obviously, barbering's not one of them, but you can just go on someone and then, oh shit, I messed it up, let me do it again. Yeah. How do you deal with that? I think when you've been cutting hair for so long, you can kind of adapt quite quickly. So when you see something, yeah. you know how it's, to it's do that it. Versatile it's versatile side. Like, you can have someone with Afro hair walk in. That was another question hair, I was going to ask. As good as I cut Rahul's hair. Yeah. So when you're trying something new, because you know what you're doing so well, it kind of almost all the time is going to go right. It's, it's in your hands. It, it's yeah. hard That's to explain it. how, like, if you see a certain style and how to do it, you, you just, you just know. Yeah, yeah. It's like a chef and if they see a new dish, yeah. Then yeah, they, yeah, you know, yeah. they just know. And sometimes it. you have to tweak it and, you know, change it up a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes what it is, you'll get clients that will come in and they'll, they'll, they'll come in with short hair and they'll be like, right, such I want this style and they'll show you a picture. Yeah, and I said, okay, yeah. But you're not going to walk yeah. out with that style today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, This is a, a four or five haircut process. A progression. Like, they'll show yeah. us the haircut with, like, you know, like, the corners are enhanced, the beard, like, it's like, bro, like, come on, like, it's, it's not going to be like, yeah, 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 yeah. it's can't not really going to be, be like, that. Like, the, the hair's a complete different texture, like, they've got thinner hair than the, the guy. I've with, done like, that before. Like, 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 you like, like, used to call me a picture, we didn't bring a Ronaldo or something. <laughs> 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 what I was going to say is, well, like, what's your, I know I do, I know I do, I know I do one of them anyway, but this is for Cam first, yeah. What's your biggest pet peeve that a client does that you just, like, you can't stand? What's a client ick? Yeah, what's a client oh. ick? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> you know, my clients, no, vaping is one that I've got a couple, yeah? Vaping, don't vape on my chair. I okay. hate it. Me and him were having an argument yesterday because I passed my vape. I'm like, no. He's like, pass me the vape. Like, no. I do it when you're not yet. looking. But even, yeah, you get lucky. You you come every week though, innit? So right. you, you get the little bit. Then I, like, some of my mates that come in and be vaping, I'll just take the vape. I'll be like, oh, show me that flavor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put that to the side. You don't do that again. I don't vape on my chair. So that's one. And then people just, who like, move their head in it, like, that, 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 that's that's like, I'll be cutting a midway. Bro, 
I need to cut your hair. Yeah, people do this as well yeah. when they check the camera. <laughs> or when I'm doing their lineup and they're, they're going like this. <laughs> Like, like that, and it's like, oh, please, man. You know what I thought you was going to say? You know, people look like, some people, they're always on the phone while they're in the haircut. Yeah. See, that, the I, don't, I don't mind. Like, you know, if you have a call coming through, like a kid's mom, oh, where, where are you? I'm not going to be that, bro. No, you're not. No, 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 no. Well, you get call, some like, people like, the whole convo. Oh, the whole, the whole convo. convo. Oh, no, nah, to be fair, I think, well, my clientele anyway, they, they respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I do at times? Like, if I've got a customer on the phone, the phone's on this side, I've got to work on that side. Yeah. The phone on this side. And then I'll kind of go on that side. So then they, I, I, then, then the they get you get the message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, look, get off the phone. No, another one is uh, when you're trying to do bids, you've got the customer on the chair looking up and they're talking. Yeah. Just one yeah, stop, yeah. and you're there just waiting. You used to do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you just wait. Like, right, he still does that. Yeah, 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 yeah. still does that. <laughs> yeah, I do do that. I'm sorry. I get that. I do do that. I'm like, let me just learn the bottom of the record. Why are you talking about P. Diddy, Rahul? <laughs> that's what you're saying. I hate you, man. Because you used to look up to him. No, no, no. I grew up on the West Coast of hip-hop, yeah. <laughs> um, well, one of my final questions. You've got two shops. It's doing very well. Looks nice in here. Jeez. What's the five-year plan? What's, what's going to happen in the next five years for both of you? <sighs> To be honest, you know what? We're at a good place right now. Yeah. So a good place. Opening another shop, maybe. But you see what's around the corner. That you know, Cameron, he's he's doing. It. Yeah, he's smashing like it. And I'm not just saying. I tell my clients as well that look, these guys. If you can't get on with me, get on with Cameron. Yeah. You know what it is? He's your son, but he represents your lot's brand very well. Yeah, yeah. Of very, see, it's a, like I say, it's a different like. So yeah, I've got Instagram and I've got all, all social media, and, but I'm not hard acting on it like yeah. the kids, these yeah. guys they're fully like you see my my insta now there's a lot of activity on it that, that's not me that's that's coming yeah, yeah i think yeah. it's a generational yeah. thing isn't it that's yeah. it man like i say it's a, we're the old school stuff but these guys like they're they're, they're, they're they're bringing it forward everything evolves into something new doesn't it like yeah. cars are going to electric and yeah, everything it's sort of it, it evolves years, you know yeah it's still so like, i think social media is like the new era now so I, I kind of focus on it, try to up the content. And stuff. Yeah. And I get people that like, message me like, yo, like we had one guy from America just message, yo, love the content, love the page. Yeah, I saw like, that. Sick. It's just nice things like that. But you can tell if if it's going to a person in America, it's definitely getting around less. And I have people that like, message me like, yo, bro, I've booked in my first time senior Insta- uh, senior Instagram page, looks really good. Um, and the, it would just kind of go off that, and it's it, it's nice to see that. It's what you want, really, yeah. isn't it? So. You know, sometimes I think yeah, there's few places, yeah, like barbershop would be one. I think my garage would be one. That if you put a camera in there live, see, like running twenty four seven YouTube stream, it would be you sick. The amount of stuff can, that happens. Know, I had a customer say that to me. He goes, "Why don't you do a TikTok live thing? You just yeah. put a camera and just." The amount of jokes that we have. Yeah. You know what? To be yeah. fair, that would be sick, actually. Yeah. And just have it there. You don't have to do nothing. Yeah, just people, have it there. You forget it's there. Come, come in that in would be out. sick. That's a sick idea. Uh, people come in and out. He goes, you, you get paid off of it. Yeah, yeah, you do, you do. But again, that's something for that, that future generation. Like, yeah, man. That is, that is actually quite a sick idea. I didn't think of that, you know, having a live cam just in here, like, for the day and that. That's actually quite sick. Yeah, yeah. It is. You know what? This, this barbering game, we love it. Absolutely, you gotta love what you yeah, do, yeah, though, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It's that like probably with yourself as yeah, well. You, yeah. get, you get so many, like, yeah, you get your, your, your sad stories, your good stories, you get your people come in, you have a laugh, you have your mates pop in. It's not like doing a nine to five yeah. working for British Gas where you know, you've got a manager over you or you're seeing different people every day, it's yeah, different yeah, challenges yeah, yeah, every day. Yeah. And one thing about this is one thing I've learned is you never judge a book by its cover. Yeah, yeah. I've had guys come in in suits saying that you think, yeah, okay, yeah. they've been that. Like, I'm again, no disrespect, that like, the worst. Yeah, clients, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very not, not not even picky, but just got very bad attitudes. Yeah. 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 But then you get some guy come in like you know like tracksuit, and then he'll be the nicest person that you know. Um, so you like you, you number know, one thing don't you get you get, never, never, you get never, so many different yeah. people different yeah. walks of life. When I first started, I used to do that. I think oh you know I don't want to put this guy's hair like he, just, he looks like, like you know he's gonna cause trouble. Yeah. 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 But, and then you learn, like, innit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when Rumble first walked in, I thought, who's this? Yo, my barber, uh, I think my last barber's not something, something, something. And I was like, I wonder like, who is this guy, yeah? <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, here he is, not every Wednesday. Yeah, that's it, every Wednesday, man. Every week without fail since what, for the last three years? Last three and a half years? 
Well, um, thanks for having us, guys. Yeah, oh, man. Good. Thanks good for team. also thanks for sponsoring us, man. Thanks yeah, for believing in us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Love, man. Thank. JD. All the best for the future. Yeah, wicked. Thank you very Cam. much for having us, guys. Yeah. 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 And, uh, can I just give a quick shout out just to say um, our, our Instagram? Yep. Just yeah, so man. If anybody we'll wants, anyway. yeah, if anybody wants to book with us, if you go to our website www.manmadefathers.co.uk, you can book online. Book with Booksy. Um, any problems, just give us Google the shop names of Wealth Road and Sice and Man Made Barbers uh, and our Instagram, um, manmade underscore barbers. Uh, so just hit us up, give us a follow. All links will be down below. Yeah. And please don't book on a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> 10 15 Wednesday, that's my slot. In the next three months, then, yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And massive love to all, all the Leicester barbers um, out there. It's, it's, it's all love. That's it, man. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. That's and it. And it's a wrap. It's a wrap.